we're going to continue chapter three uh, in Hilchot uh, Laws of Tshuva. We're going to do Hilchot Laws eleven and twelve. They're very short. It says as follows, because we're talking about the people who lose their Olam Abba. So we talked about many, now there's another group of people that is called HaPoresh Midarkei Tzibur, a person who separates himself from the community. This is very important to know because in our generation people distort it and if you don't follow a certain rule which is irrelevant then we'll, we will call you that you're going away from the community or separates, but this is, we have to learn it a little bit. So it says a person that separates himself from the community loses his Olam Abba. Even though you didn't do a sin, but you separate yourself from the community, and you don't include yourself with doing mitzvot with them, but you also don't include yourself in their suffering, because sometimes there's a whole community that suffers. For example, doesn't uh, fast with them. Now, we don't really do that so much in our generation, although there are many communities that they do that, by the way, and they take on themselves fasts. So we have a general fast that we do, the 10th of Tevet, and so Tanit Esther, and before Purim, and Yudzayin Betamuz, the 17th of Tamuz, Tisha B'Av. We have all these fasts that we do. But some communities, they see that there's a problem, and the whole community fasts for the health or miraculous recovery of some of their uh, community member or chas shalom there were times there was a drought here in Israel people made fasts a few years ago because of the uh, uh, situation the security situation in Israel was pretty scary was a threat of a war many communities took on themselves a three-day fast so some people do it here is someone a person says listen you're all fasting that's not for me I'm <laughs> I'm not uh, gonna include myself that's a Porosh Matzibur, you're taking yourself out of the community. It says, listen, I don't want to follow what you do. I will attach myself to the nation or the faith of the religion of where I live. And I don't want to be part of you. I want to be part of them. You lose your place in the world to come. And you know where you had that a lot? And I'm not blaming anybody or Chas I'm judging anybody, but a hundred years ago, 120 years ago, there was a lot of pogroms in Russia. And many Jews says, that's not worth being a Jew because I'm going to be executed, I'm going to be uh, uh, tortured. I will remove myself to this part of the neighborhood and I'm going to be part of the, the non-Jews. Whether pretending he's a non-Jew or not pretending, so again, I'm not judging anybody. I don't know what I would do in a situation like that. But in the Holocaust too, many people says, I don't want to be part of this group. That's taking you, separating yourself from the community. A person like this loses his Olam Abba. And again, he is not going into details. Maybe in the future we'll do another class going into details because it's a very fine line here with leaving the community. And I'm going to raise a problem in a second that has a problem with many people. Anyways, Haosea Averot Beyad Ramaki Yakim. Some people, in that respect, they do sins, but in a very obvious way. They, as they say, proudly do the sins. I had a relative who was very unhappy with the, the fact that he was Jewish. So he married a non-Jewish woman, and he would proudly celebrate Christmas, proudly do Easter, proudly and mock the, the fact that the, what the Jews do. He would do it in a very not nice way. And, uh, and uh, Hashem Erachem, I hope Hashem has a lot of mercy on him because towards the end of his life he went through hell. Uh, I was looking from the side and saying, wow, what the Kadosh Baruch Hu is. Maybe the Kadosh Baruch Hu is being so nice to him and giving him hell in this world and not dealing with him in the world to come. But all his life he would mock Jews and proudly behave like a non-Jew. And people would tell him, listen, I understand your wife is not Jewish, you're not religious. But don't do it in a disgusting way. But anyways, here he says, Haosea Averot Beyad A person who does sins, but in a very proud, arrogant way. And he gives an example. He used to do it. Keho Yakim. There was a certain individual, Yeho Yakim. We're not going to get into all the stories with him. And he used to do sins in a very obvious way, proudly. Ben Shasakalot, Ben Shasachamorot. And it doesn't matter if it's severe sins or simple sins. En lo chelek laolam abba. This person loses his place in the world to come. And this person is called Megale Panim Batorah. 
מפנים, מפנה, מגלה פנים בתורה, the translation is acting brazen, freely, uh, or, or facedly, against the Torah. That a person is very open, goes against the Torah. I understand you're not happy with being a Jew or whatever, but don't, don't have to throw it out to the world. And some people are doing it in a very disgusting way. Because he goes so in such a disgusting, arrogant way. And he's not uh, 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 afraid or, or embarrassed from the words of the Torah. And he does it, does it deliberately. That's really Poresh Me'atzibur. Now I know why. Why do I want? Why, I want to, why did I want to explain this and then go give the example? Because there's a very sensitive issue that's going out in our generation, and it's called vaccines. Now there's a big contradiction. Con, contra, how do you say contradictory? Uh, there's a big argument right now, and when it comes to vaccines, because some people say it's a must, and some people say no. I don't want, don't even think of coming near me with such a thing. Now, there are communities, in Jewish communities, that they, what they do is they completely kick out any individual that says, I don't want to be vaccinated, I don't want to do anything with it. Now, if a person comes in a community and says, I, wanna, I, I don't want to be vaccinated, some people call them Poresh Me'atzibur. You're going against the community. The entire community is doing it. Now you're going against the entire community. The rabbis are saying, well, rabbis are rabbis, they're not doctors, by the way, but that's a whole different argument. The point is that a lot of people in our generation, when it comes to the masks, to the vaccines, to many other things, there are the ones who go against it, and they don't want to. And they say, listen, I don't want to. And then the whole community will go against them. And then they will blame them in this sin, Poresh Me'atzibur. You're going against the community. You're uh, 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 taking yourself out of the community. This is not taking yourself out of the community. So it's very important that you understand what is taking yourself out of your community or separates yourself from the community. They're not agreeing to, to wear a mask or to be vaccinated. This is not that. And I know a lot of people, they take a ride on that, but it's not correct. If you believe and you follow your belief and you say, I don't want to take the vaccine, then and the community, and I've seen many communities that they do it. They completely... Uh, shut a person out or throw a person from the community because they don't want to follow these rules. This is not the sin, by the way. And I know a lot of people, they, they twist it. It's not correct. Taking yourself, separating yourself from the community is that you're going against the entire Jewish faith and you're proudly behaving like a non-Jew and saying, I'm not accepting on myself the mitzvot in the Torah. I will do sins, what's called the pharesia. I will deliberately go and drive on Shabbat and barbecue on Yom Kippur or whatever. I don't want to be part of you. That's the sin that a person would lose his olam haba. Not a person that says, listen, I'm not wearing a mask. And, and, and I had to say that because, unfortunately, in many Jewish communities, people distort it. And they say, well, you're not listening to the, to the, to the whatever the community we're all doing, it's for the safety of the community. Listen, you do what you want, I'll do what I want. There's nothing to do with the Torah or Lacha here and, uh, and many other situations. But I just had to bring that to be clear because I know many people tell me, listen, I don't want to wear the mask. And in my community, everybody's forcing me and they're telling me I'm going against the community. So this is not that. This is not that sin. And as uh, we're talking here about a class of Lacha, we're not going to get into now vaccines and masks and all that stuff. I just want to make clear the approach of the Torah. This is not Poresh Me'atzibur. Next, Halakha 12, Yudbet. Shnaim Hem HaMosrim. Now we also talked about another person that becomes, uh, 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 loses their Olam Abba. It's called a Moser. The, the translation for that is Tetre, I think. That's how you say Tetre. That you are give, giving somebody over? Okay, the translation I found is T-E-T-R-A-Y. Tetray? That's the translation that I, that, that I found in the book of Rambam that is translated, but I'll explain it, you understand. In the olden days, you know, we don't have to go so far. There were kapos in the Holocaust, Jews that will give over other Jews to the Nazis. Tell them they're over there, they're hiding over there. 
Why? Either to be killed or either to be beaten. This is a Musir. Not allowed to do that. And uh, the, the most that is obvious to us that was done was in the time of the Holocaust. There were many Jews, unfortunately, that uh, participated with the Nazis in Makhshimam. And the same thing at the time of the, in, in Russia. I don't remember the Russian term to that. Uh, I forgot the Russian term, but there was something exactly like the couples in, in, uh, in Germany and Poland. There was in Russia the same, uh, I forgot the name, it's on the tip of my tongue. And they do the same thing. They would give the KGB, where is the shul? Where do they do a Brit Milah? Where is the hidden mikveh? Because, you know, the Russians were very tough. They would uh, give hell to the Jews. And there were Jews that would participate with the, God, with the authorities. This is a, called a Moser. You're not allowed to do that. You know who does it in our generation? BDS. And there are many people, Jews, that they, do, they, they, they participate in that. They go to different places in the world, badmouth the Jews, badmouth the Israelis, badmouth the, the IDF, and they're giving us over. This is called a Moser. You're not allowed to do that. You lose your place in the world to come. <clears throat> so the first one is giving over a Jew to a non-Jew for the sake of killing them or beating them up. Like a Holocaust, Inquisition and so forth. Another one, Hamoser mamon chavero bidei of kochavim. That you're doing it not with the person's life, rather with his property. And that was another thing they used to do also in the Holocaust in many other places, that they would give over their property of a Jew. O beyadanas. Oh, that you do that in a hand of a rapist. Shehuko ved kochavim. And the Rambam is uh, comparing a rapist to an idolater. And sometimes, yeah, you believe it or not, but uh, you know, in our generation, nobody likes hearing it. Everybody likes to turn the head around. This is something that is being swept under the rug. Is child molestation, child pornography, child trafficking, child slavery, all this stuff that people are like, no, 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 not here. I don't know what you're talking about. But that's uh, the harsh reality. And, uh, and a person that will chas v'shalom deal with that. People kidnap kids, they give kids to other people for whatever it is. And I know nobody likes hearing about it. This is called anas. Anas is like a rapist. And some people, that's, they do it for their living. This is a business. Tra trafficking kids and, uh, and Hashem Erechem what's going on. So, uh, and, and believe it or not, it's much worse than what you think. This is called, he's calling it Rambam Anas. Anas is a rapist. It's equivalent to doing the exact same thing. And some people, uh, I mean, uh, I know it goes into uh, routes of being disgusting, but some people say, hey, you can go to there. There's a children over there. There's a somebody over there. You can go into, this is a Moser, giving over. You use a little bit of your imagination, then you make your own research what's going on really behind, behind scenes. They say 800,000 to 1.2 million kids in the United States alone disappear every year. Where do they go? Well, some of them are being sold as slaves, sex slaves, uh, uh, the industry of child pornography, child sacrifice. Hashem Yerachem, what's going on? And people just think it's like, uh, you know, what's the, what's the big deal? It's only 800,000 kids. Where do they go, these kids? So it needs to be understood because here he's saying, He's saying it, Anas. Anas is a rapist or a person who forces uh, another person on, uh, one person on another person. Shukovet kochavim, it's like an idolater. Ushneem en lehem chelik l'olam haba. Both of these types, they lost their entire world to come. So you got to be very careful. And don't think it's so far from our eyes. I heard a big rabbi in Israel testifying in some yeshivot, what's going on in the yeshivot. Hashem I don't want to even say it now, what disgusting things are going on in yeshivot in Eretz Yisrael. Hashem Yerachem. To be very careful and not be gullible and naive and think that everybody with a nice beard and a yarmulke is holy. There are unfortunately many cases, and in the faith and in the religion, it is right away swept under the rug. There's a lot of rapes and molestation, sexual abuse in the world of the Torah for little kids, little boys, little girls. Shem Yerachem. Nobody likes to hearing it. Everybody's like, no, 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 our community. So I have a good friend. He's uh, very zealous when it comes to that. He has an organization. It's called the Jewish uh, Watch, Jewish Community Watch, JCW, something like that. Oh, he goes fiercely after these rapists. 
And uh, you go look at his website, all the websites, there's a wall of shame of hundreds of rabbis and individuals, uh, observant people who, who are caught in child molestation, child rape, and so forth. And he's doing a holy work of Odat Kodesh, going after these people, because in most cases and communities, nobody wants to hear about it. And unfortunately, these rabbis, they get immunity from their, from their communities. This is a very big problem in our generation. I know of a certain individual, you can find his testimony online, a young boy who was raped by his rabbi in yeshiva over and over. When he came, finally he had some courage to tell his parents, they went to the police, the police started investigating, the whole community went against them. How dare you give over the rabbi? The community gave immunity to the rabbi who raped the kid. And then the Beit Din, that's how corrupt it is, the Beit Din went to the child, who was a teenager, and told him, here's $100,000, shut up. And the child was uh, tough enough to tell them, I'm worth much more than 100000 And you know what happened? They got kicked out of the community, ostracized from the community, ridiculed, they had to move out of the community. You can find the video online, testimony of this young man. And the community, instead of taking the rapist and hanging him by his private part in front of everybody, not that I'm giving any suggestions here, but that's how it should be dealt with. They're giving immunity to a rapist. This is, this is, this is exactly what Rambam is talking about. You lose your world to come. Why? Because you take a person and you unleash them on another person. So if there are people who are in communities giving immunity to rapists, child molesters and so forth, that's exactly what he's talking about. And unfortunately, in our generation, there's a lot of it. That the rabbis, the school, will give immunity and protection to a rabbi who touches kids, molests, rapes. And that's like you're taking a person and you're letting him go on another person. So people have to be very calculated. You know, these are severe sins when you're giving immunity or you're hiding a person. And I know a lot of people don't want to deal with this, but that's the sad reality. And a uh, person can lose his olam haba. So, you know, uh, some people know of molesters and rapists. Yeah, you have the obligation to warn everybody. This is not Lashon Ara. You know, many times people come and tell me, listen, I know this, this individual. We know that he's a molester. We know that he's a child predator. Can we say it out loud? Is this Lashon Ara? It's not Lashon Ara. It's warning everybody. You have to warn people. Be careful from this individual. So, like I said before, one has to consult with the right rabbinical authority how you do it, but don't think it doesn't exist. And I know people don't like hearing it, people like sweeping it under the table, no, 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 but it exists, unfortunately, I'm talking about in the religious communities, child molestation, child rapes, and many horrible things, and uh, it shouldn't be ignored, because when you're ignoring it, and chas v'shalom, even worse, you're giving a, a support to it, then you, you're, this is exactly what it's talking about, a Muslim, that you're letting one person hurt another person in such a severe way, and again, this is not my words, I'm just reading what Rambam says. So we have to, I know in many cases, a lot of people like turning their head around from things that are inappropriate, disgusting, not so uh, nice to hear, but that's the sad reality, and we can't ignore the sad reality. And needless to say, worry about the, the well-being of others and the eternity of our precious souls.